Hey, I'm Adam Jessico from ProudMoney.com and the question in this video is why are there so many credit scores? If you have ever gotten your credit score from multiple sources, you will see that it almost always is different from one source to the next. And so we're going to talk about why that is. But first, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. And if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So I can't believe that I haven't already done this video. I have talked about this in passing many times and I didn't realize till today that I had not actually done one comprehensive video. And so that is the question, why are there so many credit scores? So if you get your credit score from maybe Credit Karma or Experian, or maybe you have a credit card that is giving it to you free, or maybe you've purchased credit scores from my FICO, you will see that looking from one source to the next, there are many, many different credit scores. So you would think you just have a credit score, but you actually have many, many different credit scores. And so in this video, we are going to talk about why that is, what credit score you should probably pay the most attention to. And there's a lot of moving parts here, so it is going to get a little bit complicated, so stick with me. Now, before we get into all the differences, you may already know this, but a credit score is a number that is essentially calculated by using a variety of factors in your credit history. How good you have been about on-time payments, how much debt you are carrying, how many new accounts you have had in the recent past, and there are some other factors as well. So those things are kind of all put together in a little secret formula and out spit from the other end is a number and that represents your credit score. And in most credit scoring formulas, you could have anywhere from a 300 credit score to an 850. Most people are never gonna be around the 300. Most people are going to be in the five, six, 700s and some people get up into the 800. So that's kind of what it is. Now, what a lot of people don't know, however, is that there are actually two competing credit scoring models from two competing companies. So there are FICO credit scores and then there are Vantage score credit scores. So before we've barely even gotten anywhere, you already have two credit scores. You have FICO credit scores and you have Vantage score credit scores. Now to go further into this, I need to give you a little bit of history of how we got to the point of there being these competing credit scores. So FICO is the originator of the credit scoring idea. FICO stands for Fair Isaac Company. And so what they did is they came up with the thing I just talked about. Take all that information about you, come up with a sort of formula and spit out a number on the other side that you know, kind of gives an idea of what your credit worthiness is. So what FICO did is instead of going directly to the uh, lenders and saying, hey, you should use this, what they actually did was they licensed that patented technology or formula, whatever you want to call it, to the major credit reporting bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. And so those three, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, are the entities that actually hold the credit information about you. So how many uh, you know, credit cards you have, how many, what your balances are, when's the last time you opened one, all that kind of stuff is sitting at these three credit reporting agencies. And so FICO licenses their score to them. They use that score take the information they have about you, use it in the calculation, and then they sell it to the lenders, the credit card companies, the banks, the mortgage companies, all that sort of stuff. So the good thing for FICO is they've just licensed this out. They don't hold all your information. They license out the formula and they get a cut every time one of those credit reporting agencies sells the credit score to one of those lenders. Now these credit scoring agencies got tired of paying FICO for every single credit score that they sold to somebody else and FICO getting a cut of all their actions. So what they did is the three of them teamed up and they came up with their own credit scoring model, the Vantage score. And so basically they said, we're gonna get rid of FICO, we are gonna create this Vantage score and we'll start selling that to lenders instead, cut FICO out of the whole equation. Now, what happened, however, was they started trying to sell it to their lenders, but a lot of their lenders were happy with those FICO scores and they wanted to keep what they were already familiar with and what they felt 
was working for them. So TransUnion, Experian, Equifax still felt obliged to continue to sell the FICO scores that the lenders already liked, while at the same time continuing to push their Vantage score to try to, over time, get these lenders to go to Vantage score and leave FICO behind. So Vantage score showed up in 2006, 15 plus years later or 10 plus years later now, we are looking at a situation where FICO still probably is 90% of the market in terms of what the lenders actually use. So TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian have still been paying all this money to FICO all this time and they've been pushing their Vantage score and they've made a little bit of headway, but not all that much. All right, now back to where we were. We've got two competing credit scoring models, FICO and Vantage Score. Not that big of a deal, just two of them, right? Well, it gets more complicated because FICO, probably partially due to competition from Vantage Score, but partially because they want to make their end users happier, always is tweaking the models that they use in order to try to get better, to make the lenders happier with the product that they have so that the lenders feel like they are lending to more of the right people that they want and less of the wrong people. And so what that means is FICO does different versions over time of their credit scores. So as I make this video, FICO 8, is the version that is being widely used. FICO 9 has been around a while, and FICO 10 is either right around the bend or maybe it's just starting to come to lenders. But what happens is on the lender side, they don't always just wait for FICO to, you know, put out another version and then adopt it. They say, hey, FICO 8 was working fine for me. I'm just gonna stay with FICO 8. And so then Another one might say, well, FICO 9's working pretty well. I like this one better than FICO 8. So now you have a lender here using FICO 8. You've got another one using FICO 9. Maybe when FICO 10 comes on, some people are going to adopt it, or some of those banks are going to adopt it, and some of them aren't. Some of them might be using even an earlier, earlier FICO version. So it's not like when each new version is introduced, everyone just gets rid of the old one and they get the upgraded version. If they were happy with what they had, they continue to use it. And this is also true on the Vantage side score side. So Vantage score also changes the formulas that they use. So as I make this video, Vantage score 3.0 is probably the one that is most in use, but there also is a Vantage score 4.0. So now you can see not only do you have FICO and Vantage score, you've got multiple FICO versions, you've got multiple Vantage score versions. So if we went with the idea that most banks or lenders were mostly using FICO 8 or FICO 9 or Vantage score 3.0 or Vantage score 4.0, that would be four different credit scores now, right? So that's getting a little bigger, but still a little manageable, but wait! There's more. It gets even more messed up because there are three different credit reporting agencies and each of them have slightly different information about you on their credit reports. So when they use those scoring models, they come up with slightly different scores for you. So that means you now have a score that is a TransUnion score, an Equifax score, and an Experian score for FICO 8, for FICO 9, for Vantage score 3.0, for Vantage score 4.0. So now you have a ton of different scores here. If we are talking about those four that we were just talking about, the FICO 8, FICO 9, Vantage score 3, and 4, three credit reporting agencies, now you've got 12 credit scores. Now that part might be confusing, so I'm gonna take a little bit of a step back because you probably wonder, well, why do they have different information about me on each of their credit scores? Why doesn't TransUnion have the same information as Experian and Equifax? And if they all used FICO 8, why don't I get the same score for all three of them if I wanted my FICO 8 score, for example? And the reason is this, because these three credit reporting agencies, even though they came together and made Vantage score, they compete with each other and they work with the lenders to do two things. One of them is to give those lenders information when they are making lending decisions and then they also 
take the information that the lenders give to them about whether the people that were lent to actually paid on time, when was the last time they uh, you know, acquired a new credit card or an auto loan or anything. So they are selling credit scores on one end to the lenders. They are taking information from the lenders on the other end. But the lenders are not under any obligation to use all three credit reporting agencies when they make loans or decide on credit cards, and they're not under any obligation to report to all three credit reporting agencies on the other end. And that's how you end up with different credit reports. So let's say you went and you applied for a credit card and whatever credit card company checked with TransUnion to see what credit score you had. Say they used TransUnion, uh, you know, FICO score, and they found out your score and they said, okay, good, we're gonna give this person the credit card. But they never checked with Equifax, they never checked with Experian. Well, now TransUnion knows that you went after that new credit, Experian and Equifax do not. So it's on your TransUnion credit report, it's not on the other two. And because when you go after new credit, you have a hard inquiry, which is a ding to your credit score, makes it go down a little. If you did a uh, calculation with all three of those credit scoring companies, the credit reporting bureaus, TransUnion would score you probably a little less than Experian or Equifax because it has that extra piece of information about you that says you recently applied for a new credit card. It knows this and that is a negative toward your credit score. The other two don't know it, so they would not put that negative onto your credit report and it would not show up in your credit score. In a similar fashion, the lenders are not obligated to tell each of the credit reporting agencies the information about what you have done in terms of opening new accounts or what your uh, debts are and all of those sorts of things. So many times a credit card company, especially the major ones, will report to all three, but some companies don't. They might only report to one of the credit reporting agencies or they might report to two of the credit reporting agencies. And when you get into smaller banks, credit unions, those sorts of things, they are even more likely to not report to all three of them. So this is another way that your report can be different from one credit agency to the other. So TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, all three of them have slightly different information about you. And for the most part, this doesn't make a big difference, but still, when you get a credit score from all three of them at the same time, you may wonder why is one of them 20 points different than the other? Those are the little things that over time can make those credit score calculations change enough so that they look like there's a 20 point difference, even though the information is not really all that different on any of the credit reports. But yeah, and don't forget, we also have that difference between FICO and Vantage score, and those scores can be more significantly different because of the fact that those are just different credit scoring models. So even if you have the same credit report between the agencies, they would be different. Now you take into the fact that there's different information within each agency, and there's a different credit scoring model between FICO and Vantage score, and there are multiple versions of FICO and Vantage score, and you can see how there's an explosion of different credit scores. So at the very least, there are 12 credit scores between FICO and Vantage score when you factor in these different versions and the different credit reporting agencies. In reality, there are even more, and we'll talk about that in a second. But when you want to know what your credit score is and you decide to sign up for a free credit score or maybe buy one from somewhere, you need to understand that you may only be getting one or maybe two or three of those possible 12 or more when you go after this. So Credit Karma, a very popular way for people to get free credit scores, right? Credit Karma uses the Vantage Score 3.0 credit score from TransUnion and Equifax. So what you are getting is TransUnion Vantage Score 3.0, you're getting Equifax Vantage Score 3.0. Those are the scores you're getting. You're not getting Experian Vantage Score 3.0 and you're not getting any FICO score. So out of those 12 that I've sort of mentioned, you're only getting two of them from Credit Karma. On the other hand, if you used Discover's free scorecard tool, you would be getting a FICO 8 score from Experian. So you're getting one score out of those potential 12. You're not getting TransUnion's FICO 8, you're not getting Equifax's FICO 8. So you're getting one score there. It is the FICO score version 8 from Experian.
And then the other free credit scores out there may be giving you something very similar to one of those I just mentioned, or they may be giving you something different. One of the interesting things about the free credit score sort of market out there is that it actually is more tilted toward Vantage score. So more often when you are getting a free credit score, you are going to see your Vantage score, even though I told you earlier that lenders probably in about 90% of the cases are actually going to be using the FICO score to make their decisions. So you are sort of seeing something that is not necessarily all that aligned with what the lenders are actually using. So we'll talk about that as well. Now here from Citibank, you'll see that I also get a free credit score and this is the uh, FICO 8 bank card score. Wait, what? What is bank card score? I just told you about FICO 8 and FICO 9 and Vantage Score 3.0 and Vantage Score 4.0, but what is this bank card score thing from FICO? Well, there are even more scores, and that's why I said when I talked about, you know, sort of 12, there are even more scores than that. So when most people talk about getting a credit score, they're talking about sort of the general version that, you know, you could sort of think of as an across the board score, sort of shorthand for what your credit score is, and it's on that range that I talked about, that 300 to 850. However, FICO offers other specialty scores that many lenders actually do use. So one of them is the bank card score, and that is for credit cards, and it actually has a different range that goes up to 900. There also is a mortgage score. There is an auto loan score, and lenders do use these because they are uh, sort of, the formulas are a little bit different, and they are sort of geared more toward what those lenders in particular want to see, the things that are most important to them about your credit history. So when you are looking at your credit score from any of these free sources or even paid sources, it is very possible that you're looking at sort of a more generic score, but your lender could be looking at a very specific score that is geared toward the type of loan that they are potentially making you. So now those 12 scores that already seem like a ton, you should now know that there could be very many more because now you've got not only FICO, but you've got FICO 8, and now you've got FICO 8 bank card, and you've got FICO 8 bank card with TransUnion and Experian and Equifax and poof. All right, now with all that information bubbling around in your head, what do you do with it? You have all these credit scores. Which one should you look at? What matters? What do you do with all this, right? And so first off, the thing I would say is that even with all these credit scores, there isn't usually a huge divergence in the numbers between them, although there can be, especially between FICO and Vantage score. But no matter what credit score you're talking about, the things to do to get your credit score better are always going to be the same. Number one is going to be pay your bills on time. Number two is not to have too many debts. And number three is going to be don't open too many accounts in too short of a time. In almost all cases, those are the three things that are going to help your credit score. And so if you want to track your credit score over time, it doesn't necessarily matter what source you use as long as you use the same one consistently because you want to know what the trend is. Here's where I started. Here's where I am six months later. Here's where I am 12 months later, right? So if you're using Credit Karma and you are seeing the trend of how your numbers are doing, that's great. You don't necessarily have to change to something else. Now, if it were me, I would say I would probably track a FICO score versus a Vantage score because, again, more lenders use FICO scores in their actual decision making. So it depends on how important that is to you. You might just want to know how am I doing vaguely on my credit score or you might think I have a mortgage that I want to apply for in six months. I want a FICO score so I can have a better idea of how I am doing on something that I think that they are actually going to use to evaluate me and using that mortgage uh, uh, example even more so, you might even want to go to FICO, the My FICO site, and actually purchase your credit scores to see what your actual mortgage score is versus the sort of more generic score that I have been talking about. Now, for the most part, I wouldn't say I would pay for a credit score on an ongoing basis, but for something important like a mortgage, that is something when maybe you would pay to in order to know what they are, uh, you know, seeing about you so far and sort of watching it over time.
So I think that's it. I got really excited about the credit scores for whatever reason, but really in reality, if you're tracking one credit score and kind of seeing the trend of how you're doing, you're going to have a vague idea of probably whether you're going to get approved or rejected for a lot of credit cards or loans. So that's really the sort of bottom line advice, but you came here to know what the difference was and hopefully I have covered that. But if you feel like I, there's still something that I didn't tell you or I got so excited you couldn't figure out what I was talking about anymore, Put it in the comments section below and I will try to answer it or hopefully somebody else who may be in the comments section can help as well. As always, thank you for watching and as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews, we talk personal finance, we talk deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thank you for watching. Bye.